Hey guys, Matthew here. In this video, we're going to be going over the long-awaited new Atlas passive skill tree. Now, in my opinion, this is a great addition to the game. It is going to give players a bunch of freedom in order to be able to farm what they want to farm without feeling the need uh, to do what is the best. Because the reality is with the current look on the skill tree, especially with how many things are unknown currently, there is no such thing as a best tree. This is the first thing I wanted to mention because I think it's very important. Any content creator which is making a tree and, and telling you that it's the best is honestly full of shit because the reality is we just don't know. There are too many unknowns and of course it all depends on your character uh, and um, what you actually enjoy because the reality is when you are farming something that you typically enjoy, you are going to be... Uh, more efficient and you're more likely to do it more right uh which means you are still going to end up making more currency doing that than doing something which is on paper better currency per hour but then you actually hate doing uh so i just thought i would premise the video by saying that now what i've done here is i haven't created this one ultimate skill tree because as i just said i don't think that's a thing but what i did do is i created a spreadsheet now, there's a few disclaimers or warnings that I think is going to be important before I get into the, the actual uh, values here. The first thing is that when you go about making your own tree here, you want to make sure that you are getting at least around 50 to 60% maps drop in areas have percent chance to be one tier higher. Now, this is in order to replace the old Atlas bonus objectives, which would give us upwards of something like 160% uh, chance to get plus one tier on our maps. Uh, so overall, there's going to be a lot more monsters in your maps now with all these mechanics right being added So I think map sustain is going to be better Which is why I don't think that you need to go as high as hundred percent or even hundred fifty or anything like that I do think that fifty to sixty percent is probably going to be more than enough in order to be able to sustain and progress through your atlas However, I do think that this is obviously not set in stone There's a chance that this is completely wrong and at the end of the day We will need to invest more into it uh, we'll have to wait and see Now another thing uh, that I would say is that no matter what your tree looks like you should be getting some sort of acquire, uh, Acquiring boss drops. Uh, so things like synthesized maps things like guardian maps things like conqueror maps Whatever it is you should definitely be investing into one or two of these nodes because uh, they they're not necessarily going to be that good on a map to map basis, but they're they're kind of like these jackpot nodes uh, where Every so often, you're going to get one of these maps, which is going to be worth, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 C, uh, or if you get to drop a Cortex, multiple exalts, right? And uh, this is just going to feel really good. So it's not like a necessity. I would just say that it's something that I personally would incorporate in every every single one of my trees uh, because it's going to break the uh, the cycle, the, the mundanity, if you will, of always, uh, you know, ha having the same rewards every single map. Okay, another thing that I would highly recommend when making your tree is to make sure that you leave at least 30 to 50 points open. Now, 50 might be a little bit a little bit much, but I would say at least like 30 points open because the reality is you are getting one point on the Atlas tree per map completed. So it is very front-loaded. Initially, you're going to be getting a lot of points, right? But at the end, it's going to be harder and harder to get the points and also to get the last like 15 or 20 or whatever you'll need to do all of the end game encounters, right? So if you're somebody who doesn't typically do the super end game encounters, like, you know, say the Feared or Maven or Uber Elder, then you might not get access to those points. So if you plant a tree which has zero points left, then you're not actually going to be able to get all this stuff. Now, another reason for that, by leaving some points opened, is that as we discover more and more, right, of the nodes that we have no idea about, for example, Rampant Growth, you can decide, oh, uh, you know, someone made a video about this node. It turns out it's actually pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and pick it up because I've got some points left over, right? Remember uh, that this is obviously, uh, you. there's nothing set in stone. You can easily respec your passive tree. Every single one of these nodes can be respec'd uh, for two regrets by buying unmaking orbs from Kirak. Uh, so it's not like you're uh, wasting a bunch by actually, uh, you know, specking out in, into a bunch of stuff. You know, feel free to do some trial and error on your tree. But I would say, personally, all the trees that I will plan will, will have at least 30 to 40 nodes left over uh, in order to, uh, to, to do some testing. Exactly that. Okay, now let's talk about what I've personally prepared uh, because I didn't want to go out and tell you guys to run this, run 
X trade because it's the best one because that's just not possible. So what I did instead is I looked at every single one of these cluster of nodes and the ones that I know what they do, right? Because there's a lot of unknowns, but all the ones that I know what they actually do. And I tried to basically come up with a value of each of these cluster uh, clusters of nodes on a map to map basis. And then I color coded how much they're worth. So for example, a cluster that's red is probably worth less than a chaos per map on average. Right, because you can't look at it in a vacuum. Here's an example. Test of Loyalty is a really good node. Test of Loyalty uh, is a betrayal node right here, which gives you immortal syndicate members executed in areas have a 100% chance to get an additional rank. In a vacuum, that's huge. Essentially, what that means is that whenever you are uh, trying to upgrade your syndicate, you are basically getting the double the value, right? It's worth two maps in the single map. Now, that sounds great except that you don't get you don't get your actual syndicate every map right there's no way to do that yes there are master missions but you're going to run out extremely fast so in reality you're going to get the same odds of getting betrayal than any other mechanic so let's just call it a 10 percent or let's say you're getting some nodes on the tree let's just call it a 15 percent so let's just say every eight maps you're going to get uh, betrayal to show up which means uh, you're going to get value out of this every eight maps. There's no way that this is worth a whole lot on a map to map basis. And this is the idea that I went with. So I've priced it at about one C per map because when it does proc, right, whenever you do uh, get it on that one map that does uh, spawn betrayal, you are getting quite a bit of value out of it. Uh, so essentially, that's how I went about it. And I've uh, separated it based on, you know, play style, if you will. So like bossing people will definitely want these nodes. Alkin Go players will definitely want some of those. Now there's a lot of them, but you'll have to choose which one you want in this um, uh, out of all of these, basically. Uh, and then we're looking at like the juicer. So juicing is all about monster count. So Abyss is really good for monster count. Beyond, Delirium, Harbingers, Legions, right? Stuff like that. And you'll see that there are also some of them, some of these categories that are that are in, or so, sorry, some of these farming strategies that are in multiple categories. For example, Harbinger is in both the juicing and in the alk and go and if you look at in the alk and go uh harbinger is not that hot right it's got a purple and it's got two blues so we're looking at about 5c per map is my estimation of harbinger in an alk and go which is not bad 5c for every single map that you run is not bad considering that it procs for every single map again right however if you were to invest a scarab be it even just a rusted scarab and especially paired with you know uh your your map device mods then these nodes become quite significantly better and the reason for that is for example if we were look to look at uh you know first wave first wave gives you harbingers in areas have 25 percent chance to be replaced by a powerful harbinger boss now if you've got no investment whatsoever in harbinger except the one free harbinger on the atlas uh that is 25 percent, which means it's going to proc every four maps yeah, it'll give you a powerful Harbinger boss, but it's not like it's guaranteed to give you Exalt shards or even, uh, you know, uh, ancient, uh, ancient Orb shards, right? So, how much is it really worth? Not much. However, if we take this exact same node, First Wave, but we add, it, add like Harbinger on the map device, and then we add like a Rusted Harbinger Scarab, all of a sudden we're looking at maybe five Harbingers in your map, which means that this is going to proc at least, on average, once every single map. Now, it's a lot better than it used to be. So now I've calculated worth about 5 C per map because yes, it's not actually going to give you 5 C per map, but if you're getting one of these powerful dudes every single map, there's pretty good chance that you'll get these ancient shards and of course also the exalted shards. And it only takes a couple exalted shards to make up that 5 chaos, right? Uh, so that's why uh, you'll see some different color changes based on how much you're investing. This is the same thing for Legion, right? Legion, if you're investing, is really good. If you're doing an Alk and Go, it's okay. Maybe 5C per map total, right? And that's kind of what you're going to get out of this uh, out of this spreadsheet. Now, I do want to say that there's a lot of things that are missing here because there's a lot of unknowns, as I previously said in the video. Like, for example, if we looked at nodes like, um, let's see, uh, these right here, right? Like Rampant Growth or like uh, Word of Exarch or even like the Light of Dawn. Uh, you know, we just don't know how much these are actually going to be worth until we actually go out and try them. Now, I've also made a category for things that are unknown and gamblings. Uh, so what I mean by gambling and unknown is not these unknown, uh, these absolutely unknown things that I just mentioned. It's more like unknown in a way that we think it's probably going to be kind of good, but it's not 100% sure because it does depend on certain things. 
Uh, for example, corrupted gaze, right? I think this is a node that a lot of people are talking about and, and like hyping up like heavily, but I don't think it's particularly good. Now, out of 100 maps, you'll probably get one jewel or maybe two that is actually worthwhile. Uh, but the thing is, what if that jewel is worth 5x, right? Is it worth farming those 100 maps to get a 5x worth jewel? Well, quite frankly, it probably is, right? Because uh, it's kind of the equivalent of like these uh, these sort of um, uh, these sort of jackpot, like the the guardian maps or the synthesized maps. It's uh, the same idea behind it. Uh, so you can decide whether you want to you know go through these gambling methods. Uh, so there's some of that. Now I did the same thing for Kirak because we we just don't know how good these nodes are going to be when it comes to the Kirak. There's a good chance that they're pretty good, but there's also a chance that they're equivalent to like Xana missions, which are you know not that crazy. Not bad, but not that insane either, especially due to the fact that you need to have the missions available. Uh, and then finally, there's also specialized farming. Now, this is typically where you're going to get the most value uh, out of your investment and also the most currency per hour, uh, especially uh, when you start pairing them up because you no longer have to go for one specialized type of farming in one region of the Alice. You can actually pair multiple specialized farming uh, for every single map that you do which I think is going to be pretty crazy. For example, beast farming is looking really, really strong with scarabs. Blight farming is looking good. Expedition is looking pretty okay. Metamorph is actually looking really good. You know, you, you spend 2C on a rusted metamorph scarab. You're definitely going to get at least 10C plus worth of value every single map, which is nice. Harvest, you know, uh, is not great when it comes to the Alk and Go, but of course, if you start investing into the Sextants, which is forcing Harvest every single one of the maps that you do, all of a sudden these nodes are worth a lot more. And this also doesn't take in consideration the Harvest itself, right? Harvest as a league mechanic when you're using the Sextant allows you to get, you know, hundreds of reforges, which is kind of crazy. Uh, you know, these are definitely going to net you some money. Uh, so the nodes are kind of just like minimal, I guess you could say. Um, uh, sorry, minimal advantages or, you know, little bonuses, if you want to call it that. Uh, however, we did lose watchstones, right? So these nodes are there to make up for the watchstones, but in most cases, they really don't, uh, which is unfortunate. Like, for example, Harvest losing mature watchstones is a big deal. Uh, then we have, like, Jun, right? Jun's kind of the same situation. In an Alcan Go situation, not great. But then when you start investing into it, say with a Sextant, where you get Jun every single map, all of a sudden, these nodes are actually really, really good. And Ashling... Uh, level 4 is typically not worth a ton in a League Start scenario, but it doesn't take long for it to skyrocket. Uh, you know, Ritual, it's kind of the same situation. Not great in an Ock and Go situation, uh, scenario, but then when you actually use Bloodfilled Vessels, Ritual might actually end up being one of the best in the entire League. And then Strong Boxes, kind of the same situation as well. Pretty okay for, uh, for um, Ock and Go, but then when you invest into, it, into them a little bit more, they start shining. Now, one thing that I do want to specifically mentioned that I think is going to be good in the league start, especially for things like Chaos Recipe and uh, early uniques is this, this combination of nodes here. Uh, Exiled Will, uh, Ruckus, and Ar Unrelementing Torment. And now these go really, really well together. You have an 8% chance to contain 20 Rogue Exile, and then you have Rogue Exiles have a 100% chance to be tormented or possessed by Tormented Spirit, which means, you know, there's a ghost inside of them. Uh, so 8% chance to get 20 Tormented uh, dudes, and not only that, you can pair it with Unrelenting Torment for 30% uh, quantity of items dropped by Possessed Monsters, which are these Rogue Exiles. Now these Rogue Exiles uh, will drop a ton of item, and especially because they have, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're Possessed. So I think this combination of three nodes here is probably one that you should have on any tree in the League Start scenario, but you will be removing them later on, as I don't think that they're going to end up being too, too great in the end game. Because obviously, you know, Chaos Recipe and, and Bubblegum Currency is going to be worth less and less as the league goes on. But in your League Star scenario, this is definitely something that I would maybe even potentially consider rushing to uh, compared to the Essence nodes uh, that a lot of people are overhyping the crap out of currently. But yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for my, uh, my spreadsheet. Again, I will be adding more to it as I discover more and as I test some stuff, I'll definitely be... Uh, you know, changing these values because these are just estimations prior to even being able to do any sort of testing. But now I hear you. Some of you guys don't want to go about, uh, you know, figuring this out your, yourself and making your own tree. Uh, so for those people, I will also have pre-made Atlas trees. Now, I don't have any of them yet, uh, but I'll, I'll be adding some. And the way that I'll go about it is I'll try to pair league mechanics that go well together and farming methods that go well together. Like, for example, Essences and Harbingers are pretty good in an Alk and Go scenario. And then, for example, like Abyss and Beyond are good in a G-Sync scenario. So I'll try to make these Atlas trees 
Um, and I'll try to make a bunch of them. So if you're, you know, you don't want to try to figure out your own tree, but you do know what kind of mechanics you're interested in, you can kind of look for the tree that has the mechanics that you're into and then just go farm that. And, you know, it won't be perfect because, again, there's a lot of things that we don't know, uh, but hopefully it's a good uh, base uh, baseline and then you can, you know, uh, edit it as you go as you are finding out some nodes which you think are not worth it or, you know, that should be uh, better uh, points that should be better spent elsewhere. So anyways, hopefully this whole thing really helps you guys out in terms of prepara uh, preparation for your own tree. And for those, again, who don't want to make trees, there are going to be some pre-made ones as well. Um, remember that there is no such thing as a perfect tree and there is no such thing as a best tree at all going into this league, at least until 3.18 comes rolling around and we have a lot more figured out. Now, before I go, as always, I do want to say a huge thank you to my supporters. So Jacob, Alex, Max, Hamad, Rascoro, Brandon, welcome back, Thomas, Neg, the Great Master, Alex, the other Alex, uh, Tim, Mercury, Johnny, uh, Gary Fish, uh, Nailed, the Arsonist, and Bitizen, as well as, of course, anybody else who was uh, supporting me in the past and anybody else who wishes to remain anonymous. Again, hopefully this is helpful, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.